Antarctica may be hauntingly beautiful, but it is one of the most hostile environments on Earth. As Captain Robert Falcon Scott discovered when he attempted to reach the South Pole in 1911. Scott and his men were caught in a series of terrible storms and, frostbitten and exhausted, died of starvation in their tents. Yet amazingly, over a hundred years later, the hut Scott and his team left for the pole from is still intact. This is a truly extraordinary historic site, literally frozen in time. Tell you what strikes you first is, is the smell. It really smells of kind of smoked fish. So this is the kitchen where they would have cooked, huddled round this stove here. There's even food still left in the, uh, in the cooking pot. So we've got what looks like tin salmon. These are these hard biscuits they used to eat. Baking powder, obviously, for cooking. It's actually really ghostly, because you do get a sense of the people being here. Their remarkable expedition has captured the imagination of millions including an Oscar-winning graphic artist, Sarah Aries. So what difference has coming here made to you? I do definitely understand better what they went through here, just standing in this hut listening to the wind blow. I'm doing a graphic novel adaptation of The Worst Journey in the World, which is a book written by one of the younger members of the party, who didn't die, obviously. Um, he, when he got back to civilization, he, he wrote up his memoir of the expedition. So why does Scott's story captivate you? I mean, it's just the best action movie. <laughs> there's, there's all sorts of feats of daring do and narrow scrapes and tobogganing down ice falls. And it's so much fun. I think that that's something people sometimes lose when they're reading the words on the page. Like they hear the description, but they're not really seeing the epic adventure cinema that, that I see in my head when I'm reading it. I find it really inspiring just to see how wonderful people can be in adverse circumstances. Sarah became so fascinated by Captain Scott's final expedition that she moved to England to work full time on her graphic novel, giving up a lucrative Hollywood career. It was a good job at Disney. I've given up a lot of paycheck. I'm living like a student again, <laughs> but I'm doing something that really matters to me and that I hope will really matter to other people too. You are gripped by the same kind of passion that the yeah. polar explorers were. You're on your exploration into their story, aren't you? Yep. I, I commute back and forth from 1910 every day. It's great. <laughs> Sarah only has a few photos and some film to draw from. She could never meet Captain Scott, but she can meet his grandson, Falcon. He's come to see what she's made of his grandfather's story. So this is how Sarah has represented your grandfather. Oh, wow. Oh. That's incredible. He looks quite severe. Well, he was and leading a huge expedition. <laughs> it needs to be severe sometimes. In yes. really difficult circumstances. Yeah, he needed to be a leader. Falcon has brought a wallet that was found on Captain Scott. Oh, wow. And it's a picture of my uh, grandmother and my father. Oh, wow. As Falcon's talking, are you looking at his face and seeing if you can recognize the, <laughs> you know, the, the Robert Falcon Scott that you know in, in his grandson? Yeah, a bit. I see a bit, <laughs> for sure, especially around the mouth. You share a table with someone who shares their DNA and, you know, has that actual connection to the people who've changed my life from a distance is, is a huge honor. <laughs> And I, I'm so, so grateful for you coming to meet me today. Oh, well, I mean, it's a real pleasure to see your project, oh, which is very exciting. <laughs>